Tonight we're talking about community. Community, persons, individuals, living in relationship with other people. Living with in the same place. And in relationships of love and of purpose and a community where you really belong. And don't you think that human beings have always wanted that? They've always wanted to live in community with other people. We've longed for real community. In the modern world, I reckon, we long for it even more, don't you think? It used to be that people grew up in the same village, they'd lived their whole lives in the same village, their whole family stayed in the same village. They were a community, even if they didn't like that community. Today we move around, move around to different cities, to different countries. We don't know the people we're moving into the area with. We're locked away, often behind security doors, and more and more people live alone. And we long for community. I think that's why, one of the reasons at least, that social media is so popular, isn't it? We sort of hope that if we've got a hundred friends that we engage with within a week, we'll feel like we're connected with people. We'll have community. Well, this year we struggled, didn't we, the past year? We couldn't see people as much as we used to. And despite the fact that we had more TV shows and more movies on demand than we could possibly watch in a lifetime of lockdown, we were still longing to see people. And it wasn't just the old people who felt like that, I think. Every one of us, we want to be in relationship with people, a real relationship where we're physically with people. Human beings long for community. Community of love, purpose, and where you really belong. Why is that, do you think? Why are we wired to really want to be in community with people? What does that show about us? And what does it show about God? And where can we find real community? They're the questions I want to see tonight. And I want to put to you that we long for community. The reason we long for community is that the community God made us for community. There are three parts of the Bible we're looking at tonight. If you've got your physical Bible or even your electronic device that has a Bible on it, Please come with me. We're starting. It's really easy. The first one, Genesis chapter 1. It's the very first page. From the very first page, you see that God's a community and he made us for community. Genesis chapter 1. Throughout most of human history, most human beings, believe it or not, have actually thought that there was not one God, but many gods. Many gods who might dwell in heaven or some spiritual place, but they certainly didn't love each other. They certainly didn't have a common purpose. And you better try your hardest to keep each of them on your side. Polytheism. There's another version, which is monotheism. Islam says there's just one God, a unity. And most Westerners, I think, if you ask them if they ever think about God, God is one person. But that's not what the Bible says. The Bible says that God is community. Have a look at Genesis chapter 1 verse 26. It's there on the very first page. As God is making the world, he says, let us make mankind in our image, in our likeness. We immediately jump to what it says about us. But what does it say about God? Let us Make mankind in our image, in our likeness. It's plural, isn't it? Here the being that creates the universe is plurality, not singularity. God is a community. 
That's all it says here about it. You're left wondering, why on earth do we use these plural pronouns? Jesus explains it. He talks, doesn't he, about the Father and the Son. We saw that last week as we were talking about real joy for a weary world. The Father, the Son, and the Spirit. And he says they've dwelt together, they've loved together, they've had a common purpose together for all eternity. God is a community, persons in relationship. And our community, God, made us to be like him. Have a look at the verse again. Let us make mankind in our image, in our likeness. We immediately think that the image of God means that we are cleverer than other animals. And when we hear that the dolphins apparently are really clever and what makes us any different, we're a bit nervous but it doesn't say anything here about being clever, does it? About being rational. God is us and we are us. We are made for community. He reinforces it when he does it in verse 27. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. You're expecting singular and it's plural. The community God made us for community. Do you ever wonder whether the Bible is out of touch, whether it's got nothing to say for the modern world? Well, here we are. We long for community. That's the one thing we're so aware of at the moment. And the Bible says, yes, we long for community. And let me tell you why. It's because God is community. And he made you for community. The Bible helps us to understand ourselves and see why. And if it does that, then it teaches us how to live well, doesn't it? If God's a community, he made us for community, what will the good life look like? Will it be what your house looks like or how good your car is or how good your mobile phone is? Of course not. You could have all of those things. But if you don't have community, if you do not have relationships and you are with those people, then you are hardly living. Back in the first half of the 20th century, there was a really famous rich man. He didn't own Facebook, he didn't own Amazon, but he was about the richest man in the world and he made movies, so that's cool. And he flew aeroplanes, and that's cool. And he built aeroplanes. He was the most desirable man around, Howard Hughes. And he had a string of women as well. Then he had something snapped. Something snapped and he stopped having a string of women and he stopped making movies and he just withdrew from the world and he lived the modern dream somehow because he had so much money, he just binged movies all day long in his hotel room. One year, in one hotel, he spent $11 million doing nothing. Did he live well? No. He wasted his life because life is made for community. It's true for life generally, isn't it? And it's also true for how you relate to God. There's a whole lot of people who take God seriously They know that it's important that you relate to God. You might be like that. But they think that religion is a private matter between you and God. You just read the Bible yourself and pray. You might just watch on TV or on the live stream. But you don't need to engage with other people. You might even come on Sunday, but that's the limit of it. You don't want to go any further in relationship. God is community. He made us for community. And so if you treat religion, if you treat God, if you treat Jesus like that, you are not enjoying God. You are not glorifying God that he wants in the way that he wants to be glorified. He wants you to glorify and enjoy him forever in community. So let me ask you, 
this year, how will you value community in our local community? How will you make relationships with your neighbours? How will you spend time with people, not just spending time with devices? And in our church, how will you invest in relationships here more than just being here on a Sunday night? This year is a time that you got around to it of joining a growth group and really investing in it. This year, is there someone that you could support deliberately, who you know would really need some support this year? The community God made us for community. And to live well, we must live in community. Well, if the community God made us for community, where can we find real community? Where can you find a community with love and purpose and where you really belong. Jesus gives that real community. God's always been gathering a community. He did it when he brought the people out of Egypt. He didn't just save a bunch of individuals and say, go do your own thing. He brought them to himself at Mount Sinai, gave them the law so that they would love each other, gave them a purpose to be a kingdom of priests to the nations. He taught them to be a community. And when Jesus called people, what did he say? Follow me, he said. To individuals. But what did they do? They came and followed him around with one another. They lived with one another and he taught them to love one another. Jesus was gathering a community and it's his community that has real love and real purpose. Come with me to John 15, second Bible passage for tonight. John 15, we're in the New Testament. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, John 15. Jesus has just recently washed his disciples' feet. He says, you must wash one another's feet. And then he's teaching them how to be a community, what his community will be like. And he says in verse 12, My command is this, love each other as I have loved each other you greater love has no one than this to lay down one's life for one's friends what's jesus's community to be like to be one of love brotherly and sisterly love that's the main image of the church in the new testament isn't it that we're a family a family of love he laid down his life for us where to lay down our life for one another. Now, I've only been here for four months. I'm a newbie. But I think we're doing this. I constantly hear and I constantly see people concerned for each other, looking out for each other, visiting, taking meals, taking people to appointments, praying for one another. Reminds me, Paul says in 1 Thessalonians 4, about brotherly love we do not need to write to you for you've been taught by God to love each other. Isn't that good? Do you know what he says next? Yet we urge you to do so more and more. That's why this year as we're building strong foundations for the years ahead, we're creating pastoral care teams for each of our congregations. I really hope you're in a growth group and your growth group leader and the other members of the growth group are there to support and care and love you. But there'll always be those who are not in growth groups. We need to be making sure that we're caring for them. That's the purpose of the pastoral care team. Does it mean that the rest of us don't care for each other? Of course not. So I ask us the same question. We urge you, to do so more and more, says Paul. How will you love people in this congregation more and more this year? Is there someone you're really finding difficult to love? And you'd like to just pull back from community? Is there some way of loving that you're holding back from because you like your isolation? too much jesus gives a real community of real love i reckon though you want a community that actually has a purpose 
Most communities do. A company has a purpose, it's to make money. A soccer team has a purpose, it's hopefully to enjoy the game, but mostly to win the game. Those scenes we saw on TV this week, that I'd read about it, but actually seeing it in Washington, the Capitol building, was shocking, wasn't it? You wouldn't call it a community of love, I don't think. But it was certainly a community of purpose. They wanted to make a statement. They wanted to express their anger, and they wanted to stop something happening, didn't they? You want a community that is love and purpose, and you want it to have the right purpose. The purpose of Jesus' community is straightforward, isn't it? It's to glorify Jesus, to put him front and centre, and to make disciples of Jesus. That's our purpose. For years we've been talking about building Christian community. And we want to keep doing that, but I want to make it explicit that a Christian community exists not just for itself, not just to love one another. We are here for our local community to make Jesus known and to invite people to come to know him. Is that your purpose for our church? As we're building solid foundations this year for the years ahead, I want us to actually think about what is our purpose here? What is it that God is calling us to do? I want all of us to be involved so that we actually know where we're heading and can work out a plan to get there. It'll especially be happening from second term onwards. I hope that you're involved. But can I ask you personally, what's your purpose for the church? Because sometimes, Christians, we're so focused on we want to be a community of love that we lose sight of Jesus' purpose, that we make disciples of Jesus in the community that God has given us. What's so good about Jesus' community? Why should you invest in this community? Real love, real purpose. Perhaps the greatest thing about this community that makes it so much better than every other community, can I say, is the one we're going to see in the third Bible passage, Ephesians 2. It's belonging. Ephesians 2, it's in the letters, it's in the Ians later in the Bible. Galatians, Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 2, it was one of our Bible readings. You see, God's always been gathering a community. We saw that, Exodus 19. But you had to be from a particular family to be in that community. He promised to Abraham, and so it was just Abraham's descendants. Everyone else was far away. Verse 12, separate from Christ, excluded, without hope and without God in the world. You couldn't belong to God's community. But now, verse 13. But now in Christ Jesus, you who once were far away have been brought near by the blood of Christ. God has now made it possible for anyone to belong to Jesus' community. How's he done that? Is it just that God's become more inclusive in his old age? No, this was always his plan. And now he's done his plan. It's through the blood of Christ. By his death on the cross, he pays for sin for Jewish people and Gentile people, non-Jewish people. And on that basis, both of them come equally to God. Verse 14, so he's made one new man out of the two. He's made peace. You think about almost every other community. Can anyone belong? What about your family? Can I belong? To your family? No. I was born into another family. What about your street, that community? Can I belong to your street only if I can pay the money to buy a house in that street? Same with your suburb. Lots of clubs, you have to be from the right family group, don't you? Or have the right amount of money to join, or be really good at something to join. Not just anyone can be part of that community. And even if you can join the community, don't you get the sense that often there are levels and some people belong more than others? 
Just this week, the Prime Minister changed our national anthem. There's not many things a Prime Minister can do just by writing a letter. Actually, he doesn't have that much power, but it turns out he can just change the national anthem at the drop of a hat. What did he change it from? We were young and free, and now we are one and free. I reckon it's a brilliant change because we're not young. We've been here a long time. Tens of thousands of years people have lived here and are part of our nation. And what an offence to say that we are young and free. No, we are one and free. Does that mean anyone can belong to Australia? No, actually If you're born here, you've got to belong automatically. Everyone else might hope to belong, but most cannot. And if you do belong, do you think everyone belongs equally? Is that really true? Are we really a classless society? It's not true, is it? And the longer you've been here, the more you feel you belong. Jesus' community is better than that. Anyone from any group can belong. And as soon as someone does belong, they belong just as much as everyone else because it's about the blood of Christ, not about them. So you can be a new Christian from Hong Kong, just arrived here yesterday, and you belong in our church just as much as someone who's been here since every minister except for the first one. Your second marriage might have just ended and you'll belong just as much as someone who's been married for 50 years. You can be a returned missionary or you can be a recovering drug addict who's just begun to trust in Jesus and you both belong the same amount. You can be someone who feels they don't have any gifts to contribute, which is a lie. Or you can be someone who's up front And you belong just the same. Isn't that good? Do you believe that about this community? We belong for the same reason, the blood of Christ. And that's why it's so good that we confess our sins. What are we saying to God? We need your mercy. What are we saying to one another as we all say that prayer together? We all belong on the same basis. Sinners in need of of mercy. What a great community Jesus' community is. If you belong to this community, do you see how good it is? And do you see the other people in this community as belonging just as much as you? Do you treat them that way? Do you think that you belong just as much as everyone else. We long for community because the community God made us for community. And he's got a community which has real love, real purpose, where you really belong. You might already be part of this community, Jesus' community, I want you to see how good it is to belong. And I want you to invest in this community with your time and energy and your hospitality and your care for one another. Or you might be checking out this community, checking out Jesus and checking out his community. I want you to see how good this is. I want you to think, gee, I'd love to belong, really belong to a community like that. And to hear the good news, you can. Anyone can. Of course, I have been talking up this community, haven't I? Talking up this community as as if it's full of real love. And we're all really clear on our and agreed on our real purpose. And we all treat each other as if we really belong. They're all true, aren't they? But we all know that this community is not always like that, is not perfect. And you don't have to be in any church very long to be disappointed, to be hurt, 
and to be frustrated. If Jesus died to make this community, if it's a community of real love and real purpose where you really belong, why is it like that? Why isn't it more like it's supposed to be? Well, the answer is very simple as to why this church is like that. It's because you're in it. And because I'm in it. And because God hasn't finished with us yet. But the really good news is, is that heaven is not a place where you get to binge watching TV shows for all eternity. It is a real community. People gathered around Jesus with real love, real purpose, where you really belong. How good is that? Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we praise you because you, your Son and your Spirit are a real community of love and purpose and you belong together. Thanks for making us for community and giving us that longing for community. And we thank you for that in Jesus you've made a community, a community that's really worth belonging to and where anyone can belong. Father, we thank you for this. Help us, if we already belong to that community because we trust in the blood of Christ, help us to know that we belong. Help us to invest in relationships. Help us to be of one mind in our purpose. And Father, if we're here tonight checking out Jesus, still thinking whether it's worth belonging to him, help us to see how good his community is. And Father, we pray that you'd help all of us to long, to long for that ultimate community of love and purpose and belonging. We ask this in Jesus' name.